Hey guys, what's going on? So we have us a outside tire repair, Low Pro 225. I'm gonna kind of go through the motions and show you how I'm gonna take it off, patch it, and all that. And um, hopefully, it can help some of y'all. Did have a little bit of air in it. I'm not gonna air it up anymore. And basically, what I have is crayon, little probe reamer so and then my side cutters and I did see some stuff that was pretty noticeable that I go to first which this nail didn't look like it's leaking but I'll still pull it out um, there's a couple things I noticed this one I'm almost guaranteed it's not leaking either but this nail there's a, actually a nail right here it looks like it's in there pretty good. Yep. So, I make an X, and usually I make an X right here, small, uh, actually a line. That way, if the some reason this gets wiped off like that, I know where it's at from the side. But I'll leave that in there. And we'll pull out these other ones. just in there sideways. When I pull this tire off, I'll go ahead and uh, pull out any of the other ones I missed that were noticeable. But now what I'll do is I'll just soak the whole tire down. What I like to do is push the tire one way and squirt the water here so the soapy water falls down as you're spinning the tire and uh, if it comes across any slow leaks or something it'll start to bubble so when it comes up I already notice it. do is get in here and we'll do the side wall too just to make sure because you never know on the um, top of the side wall here shoulder area it's something can be in it as well That looks good, and then what I'll do is check the stem. A lot of times if the stem is leaking, it's going to be leaking slow, so just kind of squirt the water, the soapy water on there and just let it sit. So, it's all good. I'm going to go ahead and let the air out, take it apart, and uh, put a patch on it. Alright, so what all we're going to use, hammer spoon bar, regular uh, dismount bar. Now if you watch any of my other videos, you can see squirt water here. And I break this side down first. Just like that. Lubricate the rest. That's why I like to do the one side first. Because you either give it a lot of tension, kind of stretch the tire out, so then you can take the hammer and easily break the inside, or it'll just pop off itself. 
go ahead and loop that part down. And what I like to do is stick my spoon bar and grab the other bead. Pull it, there you have the bead. I'll just take the dismount bar on the, the uh, opposite side and um, just put it in there. Pull it off. Now some guys, they kind of don't understand. There ain't that much room here, so why try to fight with the bar here? Always come to the side where there's more room to uh, actually, you know, pull the bar. If you wasn't able to break the bead, you know, if it didn't just pop off, just go ahead and squirt water, the soapy water on the inside tire and the tire you're breaking down. That way when you swing the hammer, it'll actually just slip in there and won't get caught on the uh, inside tire itself. It'll just kind of help it slide in. So we got our nail here, it's a little bit dug in. So I'll just take, you can use your probe, ice pick, whatever you want to call it, whatever you have. You, if it's stuck in there pretty good, a lot of times you can actually just stick this in on the side of it and work it around and you'll actually get it to come out. So stick it in and just work it around. This is a screw it looks like, so it's kind of in there. Just like that and it'll actually start to come out which it's out far enough and the side cutters I use are these hopefully you can see it but they're just a snap-on brand but they have the cur uh, the angle to it makes it a lot easier to grab onto the nail pull it up and I'll grab it real tight and then go with it Which, if you can see, this looks like a um, nail that's been in there a while, a lot of rust. What I'm doing now is just taking the probe, kind of following the hole, not making a new hole, just follow the hole. I'm going to go inside and mark it. While I'm here, I'm just going to rub the rest of the tire and make sure nothing's in it. Alright, so what I did is, with the reamer, just kind of followed the hole. And uh, as I noticed, the hole went kind of sideways. It didn't go straight in. That's where a lot of people plugging come across problems. They see a hole, they just go straight in. And then they miss the whole hole. But, since the, if you go with the reamer... You can actually follow the hole that it created with the uh, nail screw or whatever was in it. So it went in kind of sideways. And I'm going to take my reamer attached to my buffer and kind of clean it out to uh, that way I can put a plug in there. So we have a reamer, like you see in my other videos, attached to the uh, buffer. I have a lot of attachments. You can get these things, do a lot of, you know, you can attach a lot of stuff to the buffer. Just makes it easier. Now what I like to do is make sure you oil your, your tools. It's a big thing to uh, saving your tools to last a long time, just daily maintenance. And you know, these compressors here, even in a the shop, they just accumulate a lot of moisture and stuff. And it just helps prolong your, uh, your tools. All right, so I apologize if you didn't see it, but what I did there is I pushed the reamer in just enough without creating the hole, just kind of followed it. I hit the trigger and let it work itself into the hole. So I didn't create a new hole. I just let it work itself and ream out the hole. Once I knew it went all the way through, then I just reamed it out, made sure it was smooth. All right, so there we go. Right where I marked it, right where the hole is, as you can see, I didn't create a new hole. It followed the same one that was there. So go ahead and put a small plug through it, pull through plug, and then we'll use a, a 110 patch, or number 10 patch, and uh, get this thing going. 
All right, so here's the plug, uh, pull through plug patch. I don't know if you remember my other video, it didn't have this because I had already pulled it off, but it's, it's like a patch. But what I like to do is I'll pull it off, lube it all up, pull it through, cut off what I need, and then I can reuse it again. All you're doing is just basically filling up the hole um, so no debris, no water, nothing gets in there and damages the, uh, the uh, cords or any of that. So plug, just gonna lube it up. And I lube the whole thing up so it's easier to pull through. But you're gonna see, here's the pin coming through, pull through pin, and you just wanna pull it enough until it's about flush on the other side. Like I say, cut this, and you still have some more for another time. So that's what it looks like with the plug through. I'm gonna go ahead and buff the area and put a uh, number 10 patch on it. All right, that's after I buffed it. I here, put some buffing solution. I just drop it on and I'll use a scraper. <laughs> As you can see, there's still a little bit more there, so we'll just do it until it gets clean. All right, it's cleaned up. Now, the reason I like to run the buff saw and scrape even the surrounding areas. When you put glue, uh, no matter how good you are or not, you go over the spot that's been buffed. And you don't want to over buff, you want buff just enough to put whatever patch you're putting on. But if you don't clean the whole area, when you run that glue, um, it can get into that dirty spot if it's not clean and contaminate the glue and then the patch. When you get a brand new can of glue, you'll have a nice fine brush but if you use your brush all the time, it'll look like that. So we'll let that get dry and we'll go ahead and put a uh, radio 10 patch on it. All right, so that looks pretty dry. What we're gonna use is the number 10, as you can see. And there's a little arrow right here. It's kind of hard to show you. Right in here, that tells you bead to bead. There's usually arrows on them. Um, that'll tell you how to put them. You don't want to put them like this. I see a lot of guys put them like that. But you want bead to bead, just like that. I'll just go ahead and break the uh, paper away from the patch. And I'll leave a piece of the patch on there like this that I'll grab it with. Just like that, and then I'll roll it with the uh, stitcher here. And I always like to pull the paper off. And what happens here is, as it's coming off, if, some, if the patch didn't stick, the patch actually come off with that. So it's always like a little insurance to check that and make sure, and then I'll roll it again. And for some reason, if I'm unsure, I usually use the corner of this and check the corner of the patches, of the patch, to make sure nothing's loose. Because a patch can be old, sitting in your truck a while, the weather can get to it, depending on the weather, the glue, you know, it's, it's a lot of factors too. So I was just kind of double check, especially on something like this. All right, guys. So this is the plug on the outside. If you if you wanted to, you could take your buffer. Just kind of blend it in. You can actually take repair sealant. Just real thin across that and nobody ever know that was there. I went ahead and looped the tire up. This is important on the lube. Loop the bead 
also lube kind of out here too. That's what's going to help it make it slide on better. This is the part where a lot of people have issues doing an outside tire. All you need is one bar, a pair of vice grips, or a bead uh, holder, whatever you want to use. All right. Real simple. One hand on the tire, one goes up under the tire. This bar, what we're going to do is lift up high enough and push on with this one to get the uh, bead started. There it is. All right. That's it. Now, pair of vice grips. Put them wherever you want. But I suggest here one bar. You don't need two more bars for this. Let's get it started. Hold it with your hand. If the brakes are off like this one is, even easier. One bar, a pair of ice creams. 